Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Audrey from Audrey Approved. Like the title suggests, today I'm going to be talking about uh, a reading project that I've been working on uh, for the last little bit, which is a Read the World Challenge where I read a book from every single country. And um, this is a, a project that I've started and I've, I'm, I'm doing with my aunt and my cousin, who are both really big readers, and they, they asked me to join back in, I think, fall 2021. So it's been uh, almost two years working on this project. I'd say this is a pretty casual project. I mean, we're all reading a lot of other stuff, a lot of books not part of this reading project, but it's been uh, a fun project. I feel like I've learned a lot. It's also been a great conversation starter when I, when I meet people or when I talk about books. Um, and so today I want to kind of introduce the project and talk a little bit about the first kind of lumping of books that we've read, but I'm hoping this can be like a whole YouTube series on, on my channel. So first up, what are the rules? So obviously we're reading a book from every single country, although depending on, the, it was interesting, depending on which websites you look at, sometimes the total number of countries varies from site to site, but I think there are around 195 official countries, and then we have taken the liberty to add things like disputed territories, so Hong Kong and Macau are getting books separate from China, uh, we've split the UK up into Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, and England, and then we've also added territories like Guam uh, to the list as well. And so the total number I think right now is sitting at like 204 or 205 different countries. The second requirement is that they are all books in English, so they have to be translated pieces of fiction or pieces of fiction that are written in English. Um, and then ideally, the, the books are written by an author that identifies as that nationality, so grew up there or moved there or lives there now, and they're written about characters, whether they be real or, or fictional, that exist within that, that country and that nation. And so it ends up being a lot of contemporary fiction, a lot of historical fiction, on the nonfiction side is a lot of memoirs. You know, if we, if we can't find uh, all of those different things, then what we'll do is we'll, we'll pick a book that's written by someone maybe from a different country but that's writing about people and places uh, within that specific nation. So we keep a spreadsheet that's just got a running list of ideas, so um, I'll pull recommendations that I see from other booktubers, from people on Bookstagram, from different articles, or when I'm just, you know, browsing the bookshelves uh, in, a, in a bookstore. And so many of these countries have many different options. And what we're doing is we're moving alphabetically through uh, this list of nations, and we'll choose like four to eight different countries at a time and we'll go through the different options for each country and choose the one that we think sounds the best. And so for example, the last chunk of countries that we chose uh, was Haiti through India, and so it included Haiti, Honduras, Hong Kong, Hungary, uh, Iceland, and India, and then the next chunk that we go will then start with, with Indonesia. I think ideally how this would work is that we would finish all, you know, the entire chunk of countries before we moved on to the next kind of alphabetical lumping. Uh, I tend to jump around a little bit, so I'll, I'll uh, sometimes leave books to read later, and so there's still a few countries that I haven't finished, even though we're down in the eyes right now. For example, I still need to finish Cambodia, and I just finished Belarus, but in general, this is a mostly alphabetical project. So for this YouTube series, what I'd like to do is I'd like to choose like a chunk of countries. So for today, uh, I'm going to choose all of the all of the A countries, so all the way from Afghanistan to Azerbaijan, and talk about the books that I think were worth noting within that lump of countries. So books that I liked, also books that I didn't like, or books that I thought were unique or just for some reason worth worth talking about. But I will list every single book that we read um, for for this lumping in the cards down below in case you are also doing a read the world project and you want to look and see what we read for certain countries and I'm always happy to discuss in the comments uh, about those different books. So as of the filming of this video right now I've read around a third of the books um, for for this project and so I have quite a few wrap-ups to, to catch up on but I think I, w I would like to mention just off the bat a few of the different themes that I think have stood out to me and the first thing is that so many of these books deal with suffering, and in particular, suffering within the context of war. I'm kind of taken aback by just how much war, especially civil war, is explored within these books. I don't know if it's just because 
people write more about conflicts than they do about I guess happier times in general but I, I have been taken aback and actually when I first started this project, my dad had separately, you know, without outside of this project, recommended to me a book called um, How Civil War Start by Barbara, I think Barbara Walter. And it's a really good read. And I've thought about it so often across the last two years because that book explores the conditions that create civil wars. So what about, you know, politics or economics or, or cultural changes uh, within a country, within particularly two like subpopulations within a country, uh, can encourage conditions that create civil wars. And so many of those, uh, those theories and those, those thoughts uh, show up in both the fiction and the nonfiction that I've seen within this project. There are a few other themes that I'd also highlight, one being violence against women, both physical, emotional, and sexual, which can be difficult to, to read about, especially over and over again. I don't know if we read more stories about women because subconsciously, you know, the three women in this project are picking stories about women, but that's something that we've seen multiple times. We also see the long-lasting impacts of colonization, particularly within countries in Africa and South America, which maybe isn't something to be surprised about, but um, we do see over and over again. And then lastly, I think there's just this universal theme of being accepted by your community, whether your community is in Europe or in Asia or somewhere else or across different time periods. Characters wanting to be accepted for who they are is uh, a theme that we see uh, many, many times within this project. And with that, I'll jump into the actual uh, book reviews. I don't know how long that intro was, but uh, thank you if you're still here. Um, like I said, I'm not doing every single country, so I'm actually starting with Albania first. And so for that, I read Broken April by Ismail Kadari, which is, um, I guess, one side effect of, of this project is it's added, it's made me add to the list of places that I want to visit. And so, for example, this book takes place in a mountain range in Albania called the Accursed Mountains, which is a fantastic name. And I, yeah, I definitely want to visit now, especially after looking up photos. Um, but this is a story that takes place within a rural community and it opens with a main character killing another man as retribution for that man killing this character's uh, brother. And so sets the tone for this kind of blood feud that has gone on between these two families for many, many different generations. And they've taken the lives of like 20 or 30 different men within the family. Per tradition, our main character has one month before he himself becomes uh, the hunted one again. And so this book is really talking a lot about tradition, not only how powerful traditions can be, but also how hypocritical that they can be. I really enjoyed this book. I thought it gave me a glimpse into uh, a culture and a place that I had never heard of and didn't know anything about. And so I would, uh, would recommend this one. Next up, we have Algeria, for which we read Tomboy by Nina Bahari, translated by Jahan Gavarini and Marjorie Salvador. Um, now, this is a is all about a, a main character who is half Algerian, half French, and she's really struggling with her identity, uh, her sexuality, her nationality. But you know, this is very much uh, a piece that is feels very stream of conscious. There's not a lot of plot. There's not a lot of dialogue. And I think it is very much a piece of autofiction, um, just based on the, the biography of the, the author. And so maybe right off the bat, that's just like, I don't particularly like autofiction, so I, I struggled with this one quite a bit. Um, at just over, you know, 100, 110 pages, this is really short, but it took me like over a week to get through um, because I just struggled. Uh, getting myself to, to pick it up and continue. I think another reviewer said that if you've read the first three pages of this book, you've basically read the entire thing, and I do agree. <laughs> Next up, we have Andorra, which I've actually talked about before in my video about uh, food and food history. Um, and this is a book uh, written by Eric Repair and Veronica Chambers. It's called 32 Yolks. And Eric Repair is a pretty famous chef uh, he was really good friends with Anthony Bourdain, which is how I knew who he was. Um, and this is not a great pick to learn a lot about 
Andorra because this author spends some of his childhood within Andorra, but it's not, you know, the vast majority of the book isn't about Andorra itself. Um, but it is a good book if you enjoy food, you really like um, the creative process that comes with food and combining different ingredients. And so I enjoyed this. I just don't know if it was like a perfect pick for uh, the purpose of this project. Next up, we have Argentina, for which we read Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin, translated from the Spanish by Megan McDowell, who is a translator that pops up many different times within this project whenever something is written in, in Spanish. Um, and while this story is very much, like its title suggests, a fever dream, it wasn't exactly my favorite, partly because I'm not quite sure what happened. I know it's a bit of a ghost story. It makes some commentary on environmentalism and motherhood but I couldn't actually tell you what happens in this book. Um, and so for that reason, I, I want to mention this, not because I love Fever Dream, but because it introduced me to this author, Samantha Schweblin, and I do like some of the other books that she's written. In particular, I, I really enjoyed uh, Little Eyes. So if you're interested in, in that one, I would check that one out. Um, but Fever Dream itself was maybe uh, not my favorite, or at least not super memorable for me. Three Apples Fell From the Sky was the Armenia pick. It's written by Noreen Abgarian and translated by Lisa Hayden. And it's one of the few books that we've read so far that is just purely heartwarming. <laughs> it's really just like a cozy, cozy read. Uh, and for that, I have to recommend uh, this one if you're doing a, a similar project. It takes place in the, uh, we're in kind of like a remote Armenian village and it covers a cast of characters that are all elderly, which I think is kind of unique within fiction, or at least like maybe the fiction that I pick up. And it covers their lives going through like day-to-day -day chores and the different village gossip and the different visitors that they get. It was like a kind of like a, maybe it's a good pick for fall, but it's like a, a rustic, heartwarming read. And for that, uh, I would definitely recommend this one. For Austria, we read The Piano Teacher by uh, Alfred Jelinki. As an aside, I know I'm fucking up all the names, but I'm doing my best. Um, and this has the distinction of being my aunt's maybe least favorite book. She says maybe that she's ever read in her entire life. I don't know if I feel that strongly about how much I disliked The Piano Teacher, but I definitely disliked it. And it definitely makes like top three probably least favorite books so far from this project. On the surface, it's about a piano teacher. Um, and it covers her relationships with two different people, her relationship with her mom, with whom she lives with, and her relationship with a student with which she has like a sexual affair. But everybody within this book is just like depraved and perverted and selfish and cruel. And I just couldn't figure out why. I feel like, you know, maybe it's a sign of a great writer that this author can make me feel so disgusted and icky while reading it. And she did get actually the Nobel Prize in literature. I just couldn't figure out why. Like, why are these characters so insufferable? Maybe it just went over my head, but I don't know. This was a, a bit of a pass for me and I had to really push myself uh, to finish this book. And the last pick is Days in the Caucasus by Benin, translated by and Thompson Amadova, which is the Azerbaijan pick. And I actually mentioned this book in, I think my latest video, which is all about unique memoirs. Um, and this is, uh, this is an account of the author's time growing up in Azerbaijan in wealth and in, in luxury, but at the turn of the 20th century. And I just feel like she brought childhood and the heat and the smells uh, and her her memories to, to life. I called it a romantic read and I really do I really do believe that. I really enjoyed this one because uh, again a time and place I never knew anything about um, and so I think it's a great pick for Azerbaijan if you are visiting or doing a similar project as well. And yeah that's a wrap on all of the A countries. Again I didn't mention all of them, but if you're interested in like what we read for Australia, you can check it out in, in the cards down below. I'd love to talk to you if you're doing a similar reading project because it's really fun to see what different people are reading for different countries. And it's always good to get recommendations, especially if they're books that we haven't picked yet. So if you have recommendations for countries that start after India, <laughs> then uh, I would love to hear down below. But I hope y'all are doing well and I'll see you next time.